Hello YouTube, this is an alcohol review of Collingwood Blended Canadian Whiskey. According to the label, 40% alcohol by volume, 80 proof, 750 ml bottle. According to the back, Collingwood aged in white oak barrels finished with toasted barrel staves. Some call Collingwood the smoothest whiskey ever made. We invite you to judge for yourself. As you can tell, no cork. It's a simple screw on top with a special pour, as it were. There is a seal on it, so at least they went that far. And much boasting about from Ontario and that it's Toasted Stays finish. Well, since this is take two, there we go. Now the interesting thing is, when it comes to toasted, toasted staves, those who brew beers and uh, make meads will often go take shards of, or spiral cuts, or actual rods of toasted oak. Some French oak, some American oak, each gives off their own separate flavors, and they put it in with the aging process of the, either the beer or the mead, which pretty much means it's in what's called secondary. They put it in there so the taste of that wood will leak out and it gives a, a I don't want to say false impression, but it gives the impression that the whole thing had been uh, fermented in toasted barrels rather than glass carboys. Well, when it comes to the bourbon world, for a while there, they were really trying to push hard in getting as much of the flavor out of the wood, uh, the charred wood as possible, in the shortest amount of time. So they can be put onto the shelf and faster turnaround when it comes to sales and everything else. So one company actually took these stays, which is nothing more than long rods of burnt oak and then tried to force it through the fibers themselves to give it the false appear or false flavor that the uh, that it had been aging in these barrels for a long period of time well I'm not quite sure what happened to that particular bourbon but that is what I'm under the impression is an idea for these guys. I'm not saying they force it through the wood, but I'm willing to bet when they aged it, they threw in uh, just long pieces of uh, burnt oak in with the whiskey itself and let it sit and just leach out its flavors. Usually that's the reason why they use staves. So not only is it in the barrel getting it out of the size of the barrel, but it's amongst the bourbon or amongst the whiskey itself. We have a beautiful uh, golden brown, and it is heavy, really heavy, on the sides of the glass. It's now starting to run. So I think you actually can see it there on the camera. Yeah, now you can see the legs coming out of it, or all the tears, I should say. Now, how much you want to make it bad these staves in a totally different way? So my, my knowledge of staves comes from the brewing world rather than the bourbon world. Except for that one company. It's very strange. I wonder what happened to them. I get nice fruit notes. Very low to almost no ethanol. But then again, this has been sitting out for several minutes between takes. But I haven't had a chance to smell it till now. It's got a nice nose. It's just light. It's not bad. No real ethanol to it. Just so you get that orange apricot uh, whiskey smell. All very nice. Well. Not quite what I expected. Hmm. And that was short lived. <laughs> I 
<coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Lots of flavor. Tons, tons of flavor. Orange, apricot, vanilla comes in, in strong as well. There is a slight bite here and there, especially in the back of the palate. And there is a long burn that goes with it as well. It's got a medium hang time, and that burn stays with that hang time all the way through. Yep, that is, it's got a good punch to it too. It does not come on you slow. It hits you like a brick wall with all those flavors at one time. This is definitely a lot stronger than it looks, a lot stronger than, than the nose gives it. When I put it in a cocktail, boy, it would it would be stronger in a cocktail. Say that much. Matter of fact, that might be an idea. Because it's just got so much, it's just so powerful in its flavors. It just might go well in, in a cocktail. And that, you know, I believe in a cocktail you want to taste not the burn of the alcohol, but the flavors of, say, the flavors of this case, the whiskey, and whatever else you're adding to it, whether it's a cola, whether it's whatever else you're, you're putting to it. So this would go well, but in small portions, definitely small portions. This is being drunk, uh, drank, drunk, drunk, drink, drunk, uh, either way. Uh, it's neat right now. So adding uh, some ice to it may help uh, temper it down a bit, just in case it's too strong for your taste. I myself like a good Merlot, a good Stout. So I like strong flavors. And this definitely falls into that category. This is not a, a summer sipper. This is something for, I would say, in the cold where you want something with strong flavors to come out obviously this is because of the strong flavors this i believe is a nice sipper all onto its own like i said try the cocktail but i like it just by itself give it a try see what you think this is as i try to knock things over here calling wood canadian blended canadian whiskey with their toasted stave finish that's got to be why it's it's so powerful on its flavors. Be warned, it's got a bit of a bite that likes to follow on through. But, like I said, it hits you. It hits you with a lot of taste really fast. Some may find that offensive. I like it. Give it a try. See what you think. Any comments down below would be well received. Or better yet, go out, buy it, try it, and make a video of yourself telling the rest of us in the YouTube community your thoughts on Collingwood Toasted Stay Finished Blended Canadian Whiskey. And until next time, keep on drinking.